Hi everyone. In this chapter we will be studying linear functions. In this lesson we will be looking at the point-slope form of the equation of a linear function. Okay, so now we're going to look at another version of the equation of a line. And actually it's one that you're, you're already sort of familiar with at this point. It's got to be my favorite. I, I like it here. Because I want you to think about it. Uh, in order to graph a line or to, to sketch a line, think about the minimum amount of information that you need. Okay, two points. You need essentially two points, and you just plot the two points, you can connect it. That's one scenario. But another scenario that you would need to, to draw a line, you'd need a point and a slope. And it doesn't really matter what point you have on the line, as long as you, and this is because the slope is the same all the way along. As long as you've got a point and the slope, you have enough information to draw the line. Now, as a result, if you've got enough information to draw the line, then you've got enough information to come up with the equation of the line. Now, the point-slope form, I'm uh, sorry, think of it like this. In the previous uh, lesson that we were working through, we used the, the slope-intercept form. Now, in that case, you had the slope and you had a very specific point, the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept is just a, an extremely convenient point to use, but it's not the only point you could use. You could use other points here. So, another way of coming up with the equation of a line is, let's say that you had a, a point. Let's say you knew, for example, uh, the a point on the line and you knew the slope. Let's say, for example, you knew that the point on the line was the point 2, 3, and you knew that the slope was, I don't know, let's say something like um, 5 sevenths, just so we have numbers here. Well, any point on the line, any or the general point on the line, okay, a general point on the line would be the point x comma y. Okay, that would re represent all points. Now, remember that the slope is always constant on a line. It doesn't matter what two points you pick. So let's say that 2, 3 is kind of my go-to, my anchor point. Then it doesn't matter what point I pick. So the slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, let's make, let's make 2, 3 my, my second point, point 2. So that means 5 sevenths is going to be uh, 3 minus y over 2 minus x. Okay, now look at this. Now what I would do here is I'm going to rearrange this by simply multiplying up by this, this point right here. And so what I end up getting here is, is think of it like this. 3 minus y is going to equal 5 sevenths times 2 minus x. And now, because I'm exceptionally lazy, I'm going to, I'm going, or I don't really like writing it this way, I'm going to switch this around by factoring a negative out, by factoring a negative out. And so I will get negative y minus 3 equals negative 5 sevenths x minus 2. Whoops. And then the negatives will cancel. And so you get y minus 3 is equal to 5 sevenths x minus 2. And we consider this to be the point slope form of the equation of that line. There's my point. That's right, point, sorry, there's my slope, 5 sevenths. My point is going to be 2, 3. Now, you might look at this and say, no, 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 that's negative 2, that's negative 3. But I need you to think about this. Think about where we got this equation from. I got this from the slope form, okay, there's slope equation, and in the slope equation, there's subtraction. Think of this more as x minus positive 2, y minus positive 3. There's my slope, or my point two, three. And actually here it is uh, given to you in general. So the point x1, y1 is a very specific point on the graph and then you've got the slope. And so we'll have y minus y1 is equal to slope times x minus x1, okay? And there you go. It's directly related to the equation of slope. So now we'll take a look at some examples of how to use it. So for each of the following questions here, we're going to come up with a slope and a point on the graph, uh, and then we're, we're actually going to graph it here. So take a look at this. y plus 2 is equal to 2 over 5x minus 1. Well, the slope is going to be the coefficient of that, that binomial with the independent variable in it. So the slope is going to be 2 fifths. The point is going to be the point 1 comma negative 2. Now, just to be clear, in the equation of the line, it's subtraction is here, subtraction is here. 
I've got a subtraction here, so it's got to be x minus positive 1. And then this is supposed to be y minus, but in order to get a, a positive 2 there, it must be negative 2 that I'm subtracting. And that's why this is 1 comma negative 2. Now let's go to my graph here. Positive 1, negative 2 is right here. And then the slope of 2 fifths means a rise of 2, a run of 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now I will connect those two points. And there's my line. The next question, y minus 3 is equal to negative 4. There's my slope. x plus 1. Now again, this is supposed to be subtraction here. That's supposed to be x minus. So the only way to get a positive there is if it's minus 1. So then this is going to be negative 1 comma. And there's my negative, just like I'm supposed to be, so minus 3. So we've got the point negative 1, 3 with a slope of negative 4. So negative 1, 3 is negative 1, 1, 2, 3. And now a slope of negative 4 means I'm going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 1. So there's my, my second point right there. And I will connect those two points. And there's my line. Okay. Okay, so in this case here, just reading across here, we see that the in the position where I expect the slope to be, there's the 2, so the t uh, slope is 2. And then bearing in mind that this is supposed to be subtraction here and here, I'm reading off the point negative 3, negative 4, Okay, so let's identify where that is. So negative 3, negative 4, right there. And with a slope of 2 or, or 2 over 1, it's going to be up 2 over 1. So there's my second point. Put that right there, right there. Okay, and there we go. And then finally, whoops, sorry, you can already see it. And finally over here, uh, we've got a slope in that position right there, negative 1 third. And again, it's supposed to be subtraction in both those cases. In this case, it is. And so this is going to be an x-coordinate of 2 and a y-coordinate of 1. So 2, 1 is going to look like this. It's going to be 2 to the right, 1 up. And then a slope of negative 1 third means we go down 1 and then over 3. So now just connecting, whoops, connecting those points. And there we go. And there's our line. Okay, that's exactly what that's suggesting. Now, this question asks us to determine the equation of a line in the point-slope form, uh, given the information that we got here. Okay, and now this should be really, really easy to do. Okay, this is why this is one of my favorite versions of the line. It's just so easy to plug in. Okay, so here's, here's my point here. Remember, it should be y minus the y-coordinate is equal to the slope, and then x minus the x-coordinate. And then what I would do here is just simplify the negatives. So y minus negative 2 is y plus 2 is equal to 6 times, whoops, sorry, I wanted, I wanted to put addition there too, but it's not. 6 times x minus 5. Over here, again, you just got to be careful. It's y minus, and then I plug the y-coordinate in, is going to equal the slope, negative 2, x minus, and then the x coordinate of the point is negative 3. And now I will take advantage or take um, care of the, the negatives here. So y plus 5 is equal to negative 2, x plus 3. There's the equation that I'm trying to find. And then finally over here, y minus the y coordinate is equal to the slope, whoops, times x minus the x coordinate, and then I'll clean that up. y minus 3 is equal to 1 half x plus 8. And there it is. It's just as easy as that. All right. Now, this question is asking us to write the equation of each line in slope, uh, point slope form. Um, however, this time we're given the information as a, in a graph here. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to uh, count out the slope here. So from here to here, first of all, I know that the slope is positive. And then I know that I'm going up 2 for a run of 3. So I know that my slope here is going to be positive 2 thirds. Now, if I just use the y-intercept here, 
really am going to have just an awkward looking version of the slope intercept form. So let's use this point right here. Uh, the coordinates of this point are 3, 6. And so my equation will be y minus the y coordinate is equal to the slope times x minus the x coordinate. So y minus 6 is equal to 2 thirds x minus 3. Over in the second one, uh, same thing. First of all, we want to find the slope here. So I'm just going to take the points that are indicated here. And to go from here to here, I'm dropping 2 for a run of 3. So my slope here is going to be negative 2 thirds. Uh, and then once again, uh, I've got, uh, I got a couple points here. Uh, I could use the point here, what is this? Negative 3 comma negative 2 right there. I've also got this point over here that's positive 3, negative 6. So, and again, I'm not, I'm not going, for right now, I'm going to avoid using the y-intercept. Uh, not that I couldn't, but just because I, I want it, uh, I don't want it to look as awkward as it would if you plug that in here. And so if I use this point right here, it'll be y, I would do minus negative 2. So let's just do that a little quicker. y plus 2 is equal to negative 2 thirds, uh, and then x minus negative 3, which would just be x plus 3. Or we could use this point right here, y minus negative 6, so y plus 6 is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus positive 3. Both of those equations work to, draw, to give you exactly the same line, that line right there. Either one of those is perfectly acceptable, which is kind of neat, okay? Okay, it doesn't matter what point you plug in there as long as it's a point that's on that line. It's wonderful, I love it. Here. Again, we got to figure out what the slope is. Um, and so it looks like I'm going through a y-intercept of 2, down 2 over 1. So my slope here is going to be negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. Uh, and then I just got to pick a point that I can see clearly on there. Now granted, yeah, I can see the y-intercept. Let me show you what happens if you plug the y-intercept in here. So there's the point uh, 0, 2. If you plug the y-intercept in, then you get y minus 2 is going to equal negative 2 over 1 times x minus 0. Now the reason I say this looks awkward here is because, well, x minus 0 is, is just x, right? And so this is really just y minus 2 equals negative 2x. Well, if you're going to do that, you might as well bring the 2 over and, and write it in slope, uh, sorry, point slope form. Sorry, slope intercept form is what I mean to say there. So this is maybe not the best way to write that. Um, so I don't know, if we pick another point here, uh, like for example, I've got the point here 2, negative 2, then we can write this as y... Okay, minus negative 2, so y plus 2 is going to equal negative 2, x minus 2. That just looks a little bit better. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. All right, now for each of the next uh, few questions here, we're just going to come up with the equation in uh, slope point form or point slope form. Okay, so here we go. The first one says we want to have it passing through the point 4, negative 5 with a slope of 3. Okay, well that's easy. The point, the the information that I need is all here. So y minus the y coordinate is equal to the slope times x minus the x coordinate, and I would simplify that by simply dealing with the negatives. And there we go. Y plus five is equal to three times x minus four. Done. Now, here passing through the points five one and three negative seven. Okay, I've got two points here. What I'm missing is slope. So I will use my slope formula. And I'll let the second point here be my, my, <laughs> my second point. So negative 7 minus 1 over 3 minus 5. Okay, well, negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. 3 minus 5 will be negative 2. And negative 8 over negative 2 is positive 4. So my slope is 4 here. So I could write this as y minus 1, using this first point here, is equal to 4 times x minus 5. Or I could use that other point here, y minus negative 7, so y plus 7, is equal to 4 times x minus 3. Both of those are, are equally good, okay? They're great. But I just needed to find the slope first. Okay, so this next one says it has the same slope as 3x plus y equals 5, same slope, and passing through this point right here. Okay, well, there's the point that I'm going to use. What i got to figure out here is what the slope is. Okay, well, the easiest way to figure out the slope is to put this into slope-intercept form by, by moving the, the 3x over to get negative 3x plus 5. 
See, as soon as the y is isolated and I've simplified what's on the right-hand side, this is in slope-intercept form. And the slope will always be the coefficient of the independent variable, the x there. So the slope here is negative 3. You just have to remember that that's a tool that you've got. So now, if I know that the slope is negative 3, and I know that it goes to the point negative 2, 4, I can write this as y minus, okay, the y coordinate was 4, is equal to the slope times x minus the x coordinate, but the x coordinate here was negative 2, so x minus negative 2 is x plus 2. Good. Now, has the same y-intercept as this line right here is x plus 4y equals 8 and passing through the point 3, 4. Okay, well notice that what they're not giving you here, they're not giving you the slope, but they are hinting at another point here. Now it has the same y-intercept as this line right here. So I get the y-intercept by making x equal to 0, okay? And so then that becomes 4y equals 8. Divide both sides by 4 and I get y equals 2. So the point that I'm working with here is the point 0, 2. See, now what i got to do is figure out the slope. That's the part that I'm missing. So I will let this point right here be my second point, And here's my first point. So 4 minus 2 over 3 minus 0, 2 thirds. Okay, so the slope of the line that I'm trying to find here is 2 thirds. And I'm going to use this point right here uh, as the point that I'm passing through. So I get y minus 4 is going to equal 2 thirds times x minus 3. There's the equation in point slope form. Okay, just a few more examples here. Whoops. Okay. Has the same slope as the line x minus 2y plus 6 equals 0. Okay, we've done that before and has the same x-intercept as this line right here. Okay, so we just got to pull the information out of here. So first of all, same slope as this one. Remember that to get the slope, what I need to do is isolate the y, and that will involve in this case here, now I can do this a couple of ways, but maybe what I'll do is I'll bring these two terms over, so I get negative y is equal to negative x minus 6. Okay, remember to move these terms over to the other side, I just subtract them. And now I'll divide everything through here by negative 2. Well, negative 1 divided by negative 2 is 1 half x. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. Well, it has the same slope as this one, meaning it's going to have a slope of 1 half. Okay, it's parallel to it. Good. Now, the next thing is, uh, that we were told to look for here is that there, our line had the same x-intercept as this, as this line right here. So I've got to figure out what that x-intercept is, and I do that by putting 0 in for the y-coordinate. Well, that becomes 3x is equal to 24. Okay, and then when I divide both sides, I get 8. So the point that I've been given here is the point 8, 0. Okay, so now what I'll do here is I'll put this into my, my point slope form. So y minus 0 is going to equal 1 half multiplied by x minus 8. Okay, now y minus 0 is just y equals 1 half x minus 8. And, okay, and really at this point right here, um, I mean, I could leave it in this form. I still see the point 8 comma 0, but at the same time, I'm so close to the y-intercept form that maybe I should just multiply that 1 half and get 1 half x and then half of negative 8 is going to be negative 4. And there's my y-intercept right there. I mean, this is such an easy transition to make. Uh, there's really no point not doing it. Just a thought. But this is the answer that we're looking for right now, this, this guy right here. Okay. Next. Passing through the point negative 2, 2 and parallel to this line right here. Okay, well, parallel means same slope. We were just talking about that. So the slope that I'm looking for here is a slope of 3 quarters Passing through the point negative 2, uh, 2, well that's easy, that's going to be y minus 2 is equal to 3 quarters x minus negative 2, which is x plus 2. And now finally, passing through the point 6, 0 and perpendicular to the line, negative one, y equals negative 1 fifth x plus 7. Okay, well the slope of this line here is negative 1 fifth. I don't want that slope, I want the perpendicular slope to that. 
So first of all, the slope I'm looking for is going to be positive, and then I flip it. So the, the slope that I'm looking for is the slope 5, passing through the point 6, 1. So y minus 1 is going to equal 5 times x minus 6. That's the line that I'm looking for. Okay. Really like the equation of that line. It's nice and easy. I hope that helped.